Welcome to Testing AI. In this channel, I break down different AI tools and keep you up to date with the AI world. If you like this video, make sure to hit subscribe. In this video, I'm going to use ChatGPT as a JavaScript console and see how well it behaves when I try to provide it with different test cases. This video is the third in my series called Prompt Engineering. If you haven't watched any of the previous videos, make sure to at least watch the first one where I go through the prompt structure I'm using in my different videos. Before I get started, I wanted to mention that I'm trying to reach 1000 subscribers. So if you get value from this video, make sure to hit subscribe and recommend it to your friends. All right, let's get started. So if you don't know what the JavaScript console is, um, it's a place in the browser where you can type commands directly to the browser. So if you're on the Mac, if you use option command I, the command, the console shows up. So this is the JavaScript console and you can type commands like So you can test out different things on the browser like that. But instead of using the browser, I'm going to use ChatGPT and I'm going to use a specific prompt so it behaves like an actual console, not like an information database like Google. The prompt I'm using has four parts like I mentioned in my first video. The first one is the ask, where I want it to act like a JavaScript console. I will type commands and it will respond to me and like the console would show. The second section adds more details where I'm telling it that I only expect the reply to be inside one unique code block and nothing else. I'm also telling it that I'm going to put my text inside curly braces like this. In the exclusions, I'm going to tell it not to provide me with any explanations and do not type any commands unless I instruct you to do so. This is important because or else every time I provide it with a request, it's going to explain to me why it made that request and a real JavaScript console does not do that. The next is the first instance of my query. I'm going to use these four queries after that. In the first one, I wanted to respond to me with a JSON object with the name Tim Ferriss and age 43. I don't know if he's actually 43, but that's what I'm using. The next one creates a table with three items. The one after that where I'm going to assert and make a comparison between two numbers and check if it is true or false. If it is false, if it fails, then it's going to provide me with this error message. Uh, the one after that where I'm going to run through a loop and check how long it took for me to run that loop. All credits for this has been added to the description of my video. Alright, the first one worked. It responded to me with the hello world like I expected. Let's try the next one. Great, it responded to me with a JSON object with two items, the name Tim Ferriss and the age 43. You see in this single thread, I don't have to add additional information anymore because in, in this thread, I have already told it to be the console and stay like that for as long as I don't instruct it to do something else. The next one is to create a table. Great, it created a table with three items, like I mentioned here, the index starting from zero. Let's try the next one. Cool, so 10 is less than 400, so this one is false. In this conditional, if it is, if the assertion fails, it should respond to me with this error message. If it is true, however, that it should not respond to me with anything. So I'm going to change it to say if 10 is less than 400, which is which is true. So now it responds me with nothing, which is actually expected. All right, let's try the last one. I'm going to iterate through 10 elements and print out each iteration. And at the end, I'm going to calculate the time it took to run the loop. So it's printing it out each line as it's iterating through it. Hmm. So it's saying the time it took is zero milliseconds, which does not look correct. Let me try running this on the actual JavaScript console and see if this functions. So I tried the same thing on the real JavaScript console where I ran through 10 elements and it's saying it took six milliseconds, which sounds more correct. 
uh, ChatGPT unfortunately says zero. So I think this is the first test case which has failed from my videos. Uh, but at least you got to see that we can really use ChatGPT as a JavaScript console as reliably as I thought. Uh, but hope you got some value from this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel. I hope you're enjoying the prompt engineering series. And if you have any recommendations, please add it to the comments. Till the next video. Thank you.